Hello, welcome to Eyewitness Report on Channels Television, where your videos and photos drive the stories. This week, residents of Agoegun and environs call on the Lagos State Government to reach out to them. Rice farms in Wodeo local government area of Kanu State overtaken by flood. Farmers lament losses. A specialized settlement in Bochi State leaves much to be desired as residents sleep in danger. Also, Darkness continues unabated in Ulufemi Ojo in Olora as residents complain of IKEDC stands on their transformer. Join us for these and more on Eyewitness Report. I'm Chris Elems. Agoigo River Rhine community is one of the numerous components of the Ilaje Society in Bariga area of Lagos State. Now, while poverty stares them in the face, flooding has compounded their woes. We visited following an eyewitness photo sent to us. They start road in the Ilaje area of Lagos State elicits a number of responses, one of which is that it symbolizes government presence. If curiosity takes you further down the road, you realize it leads to one of the poorest neighborhoods in Lagos, the Algoigun Riverside community. The area still bears the mark of flood that has become a regular feature in the vicinity. Some houses have even been vacated and now occupied by green orgy and waste dumps. The first issue that caught our attention is this building housing a classroom. You understand? You see, it should be growing higher and higher. Do you understand me? Yes. It's kind of dingy with dilapidating structure, undulating floor, yet the teachers say we met them in a very good condition, unlike what it was in the tick of the rainy season. A few pictures they shared threw light on what they meant. To make the furniture so it can beautify it. Do you understand me? Yes. We do go to their various homes because they have a place that they stay. It's like a wood built on top of water. So we go to their various homes, bring them to school. And most of them, even in their houses, they still have water. Because there is a time like that that water used to flood the whole area. So once we start experiencing this, it's very, very difficult for the teachers and the students as well. Most of them will stay at home. Even inside their house, it's not even conducive for them. Sure you get, but we still have to go there and encourage them to come to school. Some of them will come without even wearing rain boots. They will come with their legs and some of them will even fall inside the water. You understand? And this has been going on for so long. And we have been trying to like see how we can get help for them. So most of them, once they come to the school like this, they are happy. But of recent, we just filled this place because then it was water all through. They will come, their books inside water, their bags inside water. We'll, even most of our materials in the school, most of our textbooks, when you get there, our sick bay, everything got spoiled because of this water issue that we have been having. And once it's now rain, coupled with that water that used to come seasonal, this place, you can't even stand. Here, this very room, like this, water will get in. The classes as well, before we even filled it. If, if it were to be before, you can't even step in here. But we just give glory to God that we were able to come, the teachers were able to come together, contribute their money and we bought sand and even till now it's not even up to what we want because the whole place is even still messed up. Even before we could even feel this place, we need to see these children, their legs, their clothes every day, dirty, they will pack and pack water. We used to bail water here. These children will bail and bail and carry on their head. We, the teachers, will bail, will sweep and it has been like that for so long. For the locality, this school, as poor as it looks, is a lifesaver for the children whose parents could barely afford school fees or even food. Though it's a privately funded education center, the challenges are numerous. 
I have the accreditation of 150 students that we cater for, both heads, fooding, and education. You understand? But our only major problem, it is this water. When in times like this that we are having challenges with the water, the students will stay at home. So we always do a thing that we'll go home to go and say well to them. We call it home visits, you understand? To ask them and we ask the challenges that they are facing as well in the community on which they do explain that it is the water. At times we do, we do put on boots, you understand, to go and bring them to school. The issue of flood in this Ilaje community, according to the traditional head of the place, is a recent development. He claims a land reclamation exercise around Oworoshoki has clogged their drains, a reason all their gutters are filled up with nowhere to empty their content. The whole drainage, you know, Go straight away to the lagoon, but after you know, since the last year, well, they've some filled the whole places at the over there. The whole places where you know the uh, gutters, our gutters, our our distance, you know, flows into the lagoon here, were so blocked. By something, if we have any rainfall, you know, we are, we are being disturbed by water. Most of the houses uh, they, they continue, you know, bailing water, and the, most of the schools we have here. You know, the children, they so suffer a lot because the whole school is flooded. They've been trying all way or another, you know, we, they pack the gutters, they do everything to eradicate all these things. But no way, since the, you know, the, uh, the gutter is not flowing very well because uh, no way for the water units to bust out in the lagoon here. That is the most major problem we have in this uh, area here. Not this street alone, involving uh, Arabadale, um, Oyenaya, um, Ayola, and many other places. If we go as far back to Igbenyadun, uh, over there, where everybody in the you know, bank of the lagoon here, in fact, we suffered a lot because of the water. And we don't have anybody to assist us. Even if some, you know, some councillors, they came here last year that, well, they will have, a, you know, something, you know, to do to eradicate this water, you know, and from the people, you know, suffering to, you know, suffering in this area here. But after said and done, he came here. Since that time, we've not been seeing him. We called him. He doesn't, you know, attend to us. So we don't know how, what we can do. If the government, I mean, everybody, I mean, community can help the community to solve this problem here, we'll be so much happy. And then the children will we enjoy, you know, the atmosphere of this area here. Because their health is most, most important to we here. We are an elderly people, but those small, small boys, you know, the, in some cases, for a week or two, you see their legs, you know, being affected by all these uh, jams. So we'll be so much happy if you people, you know, can help us, you know, approach the uh, government and all that people to come, you know, to our aid here. So we'll be so much happy over that. The effect of this land reclamation may have also affected fishing business, which is their main stay here. It's become pretty difficult for them to navigate through to the lagoon as they now face so many encumbrances. The people are not happy. Whenever it rains like that, the community used to be in danger. The children, our children in the community, they won't be able to go to school. We have to be going to one, uh, from one home to another to know that this is what they are doing, to know how they are feeling, something like that. So at times we do give them mosquito nets because you know when, when, when rain comes like that, and you know a lot of mosquitoes will come in, um, sickness, and we do a lot of um, things to help them, to in, in in order to make them live well. So we are trying our best, that you know, but no, you know our best has not been enough. So that is why we are looking up to the government that if they can do anything to help them, because in the area of health they don't have anywhere to go to. There is no relaxation center where they can stay, and so many things like that they have been facing this thing. And a lot of, a lot of we have lost, we have lost a lot of children. To, uh, through, the, uh, through this thing. So we are just uh, um, help, um, praying to God that God can help us and also the government can come in and help the community. They hope the work will be completed as soon as possible and their water channels opened up to allow for the free flow of the gutters in their locality.